You want to do the Michelle Bachman, right? Right. <laughs> yeah, okay. How are you? Yeah. Fine. And you? This is yeah. Minnesota. You know, yeah. We have standards. It could be a, a, an homage. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, I, uh, I noticed as I was reading the odds, this idea of, uh, of infidelity, but, um, you know, almost, almost more how infidelity works through various kinds of spheres, you know, of, uh, romantic infidelity, obviously, but then this kind of idea of financial infidelity that, that your characters are, are reacting to or suffering from. And I was, I was wondering how you felt, uh, you know, in, infidelity kind of navigates between these spheres and how they, how they intersect the romantic and the economic. Well, I mean, it's that idea of loyalty. I think that was also the case in The Last Night at the Lobster, and this is kind of the companion piece to it. And the idea of who are we loyal to and then who are, who's loyal to us there and, and how do we sort of, again, navigate, how do we sort of treat the people closest to us? And, um, I mean, art, art now is, is dedicated and completely loyal there, whereas Marion is still, because of art's infidelity, is still sort of out there and floating there. But in terms of... Um, the money situation there. I mean, they both were sort of old style workers where they worked for the same firm for 20 plus years and the employers sort of cut them loose and they had always been sort of loyal to their companies thinking somehow the companies would be loyal to them. They could never foresee this happening. Yeah. In that case, I think they're a little bit, they're innocence of a sort, I think. Okay. I like that. There's a, it, you know, there was there was so much, so many parallels between these different realms that I saw going on. Um, you know, with uh, with ideas of gambling, with ideas of taking risks, with ideas of loyalty. Right. It, it made me wonder how much of their plight uh, came from their their own characters, and how much of it did come, you know, from a more systemic source. I want to say it's, it's probably more systemic. I think. Uh, I mean, as, as humans, of course, they're you know, they're fallible. They make you know mistakes, but it seems that they have to pay, I mean, the few mistakes that they've made, they've had to pay for them for a long, long, long mm -hmm. time, and in, in great and massive ways. Um, and, and again, I think this stems from the people that they are, in that they are kind of innocent. They do believe somehow that things are always going to be okay. You know, I think at one point Art says, you know, the problem was that he thought things would always be this way. Uh, that he'd always have a job to go to, that they'd always have a house to live in. And that is sort of the, that protected American middle class, not thinking that things can get worse. And of course, as we've seen, things can and do get worse. And I think that comes from me growing up in Pittsburgh and seeing that, that sort of that downwardly mobile middle class, which I seem to write about a lot. And it seems now that the economy has sort of caught up with my own sort of my region, my, my gloom and dune. In Pittsburgh, everyone's like, nothing has changed. It's always been this way. You know, and the rest of the country's like, oh my God, oh my God, what are you going to do? Uh, you know, it, but yet art, art, you know, has, has this downwardly mobile, uh, I don't know, direction that, that he's, his life is moving in through, you know, or has been moving in when, when we meet him in the novel. And yet he meets it with this just stubborn optimism where he's, you know, <laughs> determined to, to make everything go right. Yeah, he can't change. He cannot change. At one point he says, you know, if his strong point was this sort of indomitable hope, you know, his weakness was that he couldn't change. So even when he saw the terrible thing coming, he couldn't move out of the way. In fact, he would go out to meet it there. And I think that's very American, too, that sort of, we'll just face it head on. You know, we'll use our stubbornness and our determination and our hard work. But sometimes that's not enough. Mm -hmm. And clearly he had to uh, take some pretty big risks in order to, to meet it. Would you, I mean, how, do, how does this notion of gambling kind of fit into it? Because a lot of people blame the, the whole downturn on people's you know, over eagerness to gamble. Right, right, in terms of the, the insurance companies and right. the banks and all that. Gambling with house money mm -hmm. in a way. And that's what the art is now doing. But it's completely out of art's character. It's completely out of their character. This is, it's supposed to be the sort of this daring, you know, one time, put it all down and, you know, let fate take the chances. Um, but in fact, it's the exact opposite because art has this system, you know, he wants to make the odds as good as possible for them. Um, but it's this sort of like this very niggling, you know, you know, we'll make a thousand dollars and we'll win another bet, we'll make a thousand dollars, we'll win another bet, we'll make a thousand dollars. So when Marion is standing, she goes, this is just like him, it's exactly like him. You know, he can't just sort of put it all down and say, Psh the devil take it. 
Well, great. Thank you uh, so much for taking the time to talk to us. Oh, thanks. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, really enjoyed the party. Thanks. <laughs>